assalamu alaikum so this is a tutor from ilm online academy and we are going to this is the part 2 for biology paper may june 2022 and it is paper 4 that means theory paper so we are going to continue from where we left in the previous part so part 1 that was so the question says um, chloride ions also move along the pancreatic duct and CFTR proteins in the cells lining the pancreatic duct move uh, chloride ions out of the cells into the duct. And this is the diagram of a cell from the lining of the pancreatic duct showing the uh, location of, uh, where is it? Okay, showing the location and activity of CFTR proteins. Now, uh, in this diagram, you can see the CFTR protein. Achha, remember that, see, what, is, what are CFTR proteins? These are cystic fibrosis, the transmembrane conductance regulator proteins. And what they do is that they help to maintain the balance of salt and water um, on many surfaces in the body. Remember that if this protein does not work nicely or the way it needs to work, what would happen is that okay, there, there is a chance that the chloride ions get uh, trapped in the cell. And when they get trapped in the cell, what would happen is that um, a genetic condition, cystic fibrosis might happen. And it is a condition in which the body starts producing a lot of amount of mucus because the chloride ions get trapped there. So what happens is that the amount of like mus mucus actually increases there. So um, uh, for that reason, the uh, the many of the organs of the body start dysfunctioning, and uh, such patients have to, have to have like uh, many organ transplants throughout their lifetime if they want to stay alive. Right? Okay. So. Now here you can see that CFTR proteins are actually the gates or the channels are open and you can see chloride ions moving out of the cells, right? So, uh, yeah. Now explain how CFTR proteins move chloride ions across the uh, membrane. So, see, um, if we talk about the movement of the chloride ions, they are moving against the concentration gradient because they are moving from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration and that is active transport. Then active transport requires energy, right? So in the form of ATP. So this would take place uh, in the presence of energy, active transport would take place the, and, the more, and the chloride ions are going to move from low from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration and in order to move the chloride ions out uh, the protein has to change its shape and what is the change of shape uh, the change of shape is like uh, first uh, mainly uh, the protein channels have to open up if they were closed okay so that's how you're going to write this answer down and you can check the mark scheme out if you are still confused so main thing is that okay um, it is through active transport and uh, I have told you the description already. So active transport and uh, the protein changes its uh, shape. It opens up and yeah. Then it is a three mark question. So you have to give the explanation as well. Then next question is the movement of chloride ions into the pancreatic the movement of chloride ions into the pancreatic duct causes water to move from the cells into the duct uh, to help the flow of liquid in the duct and explain how water moves from the cell into the pancreatic uh, duct that's it so they are saying that the chloride ions hote hain, they are actually moving from you know that cell to the pancreatic duct and that is also causing the water to move from the uh, cells right uh, into the duct to help flow the liquid into the duct. Now, water is to move karte hai. So, water actually moves as a result of osmosis. Like, um, like presence of chloride ions in duct actually decreases the water potential there, and then water would move by osmosis from like higher water potential to the uh, lower water potential. See, um, water. So, due to the presence of more chloride ions in the duct, okay, water potential here is going to more Cl negative ions. Water potential here is going to decrease. So, 
So, so what would happen is that water is going to move from an area of higher concentration to an area of uh, what higher water potential to low low water potential through partially permeable membrane through osmosis. So osmosis of water would take place. Osmosis, CL negative ions, induct, decrease water potential. So when water potential decreases there, so water is going to move from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential, which is osmosis through the partially permeable membrane. So you're going to give the whole explanation as it is a three mark question. Then if CFTR proteins do not move chloride ions, the liquid in the pancreatic duct becomes very sticky and the duct can become blocked. Now, blocked pancreatic ducts are one effect of cystic fibrosis, which is an inherited disease. Now, cystic fibrosis is caused by a mutation of the gene that codes for CFTR protein. Now, uh, mainly, uh, cystic fibrosis, uh, that is uh, a disease in which um, it is a genetic disease, mainly it is an inherited disease, just may it and it's may recessive. Um, it is a um, disease in which uh, the recessive alleles are actually responsible for this disease to take place. Now, block pancreatic ducts are one of the effect of cystic fibrosis. Like one of the effects is going to be the blockage happening there because a lot of amount of like mucus uh, gets uh, secreted, and for that reason, the ducts can actually become blocked as well. Okay, so uh, now there is a pedigree diagram that you can see uh, uh, and in this uh, two people have uh, cystic fibrosis and you can see case starts from here female does not have uh, cystic fibrosis the male does not have cystic fibrosis the next generation uh, the female male uh, they don't really have uh, cystic fibrosis like next generation may this is the male this is the female and then their spouses do not have cystic fibrosis either. Uh, per, uh, next thing is uh, um, the next generation which is showing you as one two. So the female does not have, male does not have, and uh, the third uh, one uh, also does not have cystic fibrosis. But later on in the kid, okay, the fourth does not have cystic fibrosis, male does not have cystic fibrosis, but five one has got cystic fibrosis, and six does not have cystic fibrosis, female, but seventh one has got cystic. Fibrosis. Now, the allele that causes cystic fibrosis is a recessive allele. And describe and explain the evidence um, that cystic fibrosis is caused by a recessive allele. So, remember, ab yahan pe kya hai? you can see that uh, 2 and 3 right here do not really have cystic fibrosis, right? Now, a uh, recessive allele means that ke, that individual must inherit a defected, mutated copy of copy of cystic fibrosis gene. Like it must be one from each parent. So that's what you are going to write there, and it simply just means that ke, see, now in this what what is that ke, one copy is fine and one is mutated. Okay. So to the parents the recessive or mutated copy is not doing anything right this is the mutated copy and then one is fine and the other one is mutated right and for what happens is that uh, the kids that are born now this one it will have Yeah. Both mutated copies. Okay, the one which who has got cystic fibrosis must have the both 
mutated copies as it is caused by a recessive allele all right so that's that we'll see the cross in the next question but for now it's just that so the parents uh, the two and three did not have cystic fibrosis and recessively mean that an individual and individual must have two and three did not have cystic fibrosis And recessive means that an individual must inherit um, defected uh, mutated copy of cystic fibrosis gene and it must be from one from each parent. So uh, that's about it. And And you can see that uh, like uh, parents of uh, five and seven, TK, uh, uh, like those are the people who have got cystic fibrosis and uh, like uh, who are uh, parents of five and seven are mainly two and three and they do not have cystic fibrosis. So they must be the carriers, right? And carriers of the mutant allele. So carriers, but they were the carriers of, but carriers of, mutant allele so uh, those uh, uh, those uh, five and seven might have like actually um, received the mutant mutant copy um, one from each parent tk and that way they had cystic fibrosis okay so that's the reason because when we talk about uh, a recessive allele which is responsible for causing a specific disease so the uh, the or the person must have two of those uh, alleles in order to have that disease. Now, parents were heterozygous. That means they were carrier, but they did not have that disease, right? So, uh, when uh, they actually um, got, uh, when uh, when we talk about the cross, so what happened was that okay, the kids, um, two of the two of the offsprings actually received the mutant copies of the gene and causing cystic fibrosis. Now, person seven is expect expecting a child with a man who is uh, heterozygous for cystic fibrosis. Okay, so let's see the person seven first. Person seven is the one who has got cystic fibrosis, right? So person seven is uh, supposed to have like cystic fibrosis, right? And complete the genetic diagram to predict the probability of uh, the probability of person seven and the heterozygous man having a child with uh, cystic uh, fibrosis. Use the symbol A for the dominant allele and A for the uh, recessive allele. So person seven is expecting a child with a man who is uh, heterozygous for cystic fibrosis. Okay, so person seven must have like cystic fibrosis so he has got two copies of the recessive allele right and uh, the uh, the one uh, who he the man has got heterozygous right so gametes banana the gametes are going to be to look something like this um a a a and small a right these are gametes and aage kya karna hai? we are going to do the cross okay so uh it react this this so we'll have a heterozygous and then we'll have heterozygous right and then homozygous And so these are going to be the progeny. So genotypes of the offsprings are A. Okay. Okay. So two of these, take it two of the offsprings will have cystic fibrosis. Phenotype is um with 
you're going to uh, tell that k phenotype uh, may what are you going to tell with or without cystic fibrosis like what's going to happen two of these like i told you like two of these are going to be having cystic fibrosis then two are not going to probability of having children with cystic fibrosis that is simply 50 percent 50 50 it is with or without phenotype is with or without like cystic fibrosis you're going to write then question number four is researchers investigated the effect of adding cattle manure to field where snap bean plants uh azolus, uh vulgaris were uh, grown cattle manure contains some protein and explain how protein in the cattle manure is converted to the type of fine that plants can absorb now plants cannot actually absorb like nitrogen is present in our atmosphere and it is like present in 78 percent it is but plants cannot use that atmospheric nitrogen so they have to get it in the form of some ions or in the form of uh, soluble forms in which uh, the plants can actually absorb the nitrogen and get its benefits right right so uh, sometimes farmer have actually you have to use fertilizers in order to provide the uh, essential nutrients to the plants now we need to tell explain how protein in the cattle manure is converted to the type of ions that plants can absorb so what happens is that ke proteins to hote hain, proteins are made up of amino acids amino acids right proteins are made up of amino acids all right so uh jo proteins hoti hain, uh, they might they would be get decomposed or bro get broken down by uh, fungi or bacteria or other decomposers right and uh, these uh, bacteria fungi they actually use protease enzyme take it the bacteria might use the proteases in them in order to break down the proteins into or digest the proteins into amino acids right then uh, these amino acids would be uh deaminated okay the deamination would be would be carried out of the amino acids and as a result of that ammonia would be produced all right and then uh, jo ammonia hoti hai, that uh, the ammonia or ammonia gas or the ammonium ions okay these ammonia gas or ammonium ions okay in the form of ammonium ions containing salt uh, the plant can actually receive the nitrate nitrogen but still these uh, nh4 can still be converted into uh, like nitrates or nitrites which are no3 nitrates or nitrites by nitrifying bacteria okay this would be done by uh, nitrifying uh, bacteria okay so you're going to write it all whatever i have explained to you then snap bean plants are legumes which have root nodules that contain nitrogen fixing bacteria now, these nitrogen fixing bacteria, what they do is that they can actually convert the atmospheric nitrogen into usable forms of nitrogen or which can be like used by plants. Okay, so um, as the advantage uh, to farmers of having snap bean plants that have a large number of root nodules is that okay, farmers would not really have to add nitrogen in the form of fertilizers. So they won't uh, need to add no fertilizers or less fertilizers and that way it would help out with management of cost. So it would um, help out with management of cost and it won't be that expensive and yeah. So they would have to use no fertilizer or less fertilizer and help with cost. Then the researcher investigated the effect of adding cattle manure to fields of snap bean plants. Field one was treated with small quantity of cattle manure. Field two was um, treated with the medium quantity of cattle manure. Field three was treated with a large quantity of cattle manure. And field four was not treated with cattle manure. And let's see the graph the researchers counting the number of root nodules on sample plant from each field where when the snap bean were harvested so we're going to see the graph uh, on the axis as you can see field on the y axis you can see average number of root nodules per plant we need to calculate the percentage increase in the average number of root nodules per plant when snap bean were grown with large quantity of cattle manure three and compared to no cattle manure so three may large quantity of cattle manure was added and compared to no cattle manure and four so firstly let's we need to see the graph and in order to see that we need to count how many blocks are they one two three four five okay so those are five so or um uh kitne 
uh, divided by what is the first point just 20 so 20 divided by 5 so it will give us 4 right so let's find the first value the first value is going to be um like it would be 144 148 then 148 so it's 152 right 152 and then 156 so it's going to be 156 first value take it for field 3 and for 4 it's going to be 84 88 80 92 right and then uh, it's going to be 96 mainly 96 okay 156 and 96 give your answer to two significant figures and space uh, for uh, working okay so first we need to tell the percentage increase the first thing is that we need to tell the difference now difference is going to be uh, difference firstly that will be 156 of the two values which is 156 minus 96 and it will give you 60 and then after finding this difference, what we are going to see uh, use is that uh, we are going to use this uh, difference. We are going to divide it with what? We are going to divide it with the uh, one in which no uh, no cattle manure was added. So it would be 96. And that is our first value, na? And into 100, original value, right? So the 60 divided by 96, which is, and then we'll have our answer as 62.5 it will actually give you but uh, there is an important thing and that is you have to give your answer to two significant figures so it will be approximately 63 percent and if you don't write it to two significant figures your answer would be your marks would be deducted now when large quantities of manure are put on fields it can lead to eutrophication describe how eutrophication of streams and rivers can lead to death of the fish so mainly it is ke, uh, when uh, large quantities of manure are put so manure kind of acts like a fertilizer there so what would happen is that it will cause uh, in the formation of a lot of algae on the surface of water so there will be algal bloom and then algal bloom is going to actually cover the surface of water so uh, it's going to block the sunlight and when it blocks the sunlight what will happen is that okay, um, the plants that are present on the bottom of the sea bottom of the river plants those are going to uh, uh, sunlight would be blocked so they are going to die and when they die uh, the decomposers are going to go into the water and down at the bottom decomposers and they are going to uh, carry out aerobic respiration that means they will use the oxygen that is dissolved in water okay decomposers are going to decompose the dead plants with that they undergo aerobic respiration they are going to use oxygen that is dissolved in water and with that what would happen is that the plants are dead there in the sea and then dissolved oxygen is getting used up by the uh, by the decomposers and uh, depletion of dissolved oxygen would take place and as a result of that the fish would die because fish need dissolved oxygen in order to survive okay uh, depletion Okay. Then uh, Mulanges uh, cedar uh, is the national tree of Malawi, and this species of tree grows naturally only on mount uh, in mountain in Malawi. And many of the trees have been over harvested or destroyed by wildfires, resulting in deforestation. Take the genus name of the of this uh, cedar tree. So uh, remember that the genus name is always the first one and it is written with a capital and letter. So it's that.
and then explain the undesirable effects of deforestation in habitats that are on mountain such as uh, this mount uh, such as this mount so when deforestation would happen remember that okay, there won't any be any roots left behind to absorb uh, water and uh, the roots are really the roots of the plants are really responsible to uh, help out binding the soil uh, soil together and that binding of soil like helps the soil to retain its nutrients otherwise the soil is going to become barren why is that so because water can wash away the nutrients very easily if the soil is not uh, really uh held together or it's not uh, really bound so there won't be any roots deforestation might lead there won't be any roots no roots to keep buying the soil and uh, there would be increase in runoff soil runoff and with that nutrients are also going to be run off or they're going to and then with that um uh, what would happen is that uh, loss of mineral nutrient contents of soil and there would be more and more floods now uh, see floods could be stop karta because the roots hoti they actually absorb uh, water right so so roots roots uh, nahi hongi plants ki which can actually absorb water that play a great role in like stopping floods and with that so trees hote they themselves act as a barrier they would also slow down the uh, uh, like the water a uh, flood water so that's that and then scientists in malawi are working to prevent the extinction of that cedar tree in its natural habitat and explain the benefits to other organism on that mount of converse of conserving the melanges uh, cedar tree in its natural habitat so firstly it is um, their habitat it gives them shelter right so it is also a kind of food source for them source of food and with that um uh, it is a shelter or the nesting and breeding space it is for birds many types of bird and uh, yeah that's that then the seeds of many endangered trees uh, species uh, are kept in seed banks just why it is important to collect seeds from many individual trees of each species rather than just one tree so uh, it is because of uh, see they are asking us okay, why it is important to collect seeds from many individual tree why don't we like collect um, individual trees of species rather than just one tree that is because we want to kind of maintain the genetic diversity or the uh, variation because very variation i guess because we want to convert the scientists are uh, the they want to convert conserve the genetic diversity and the variation now uh, a plant a uh, plant grown from seeds may be kind of adapted to changes in the environment different environments right and plants uh, may be resistant to diseases pests because variation plays a great role in like uh, preventing plants from diseases as well as helping them adapt to different environments and um, jo uh, plants honge some um, some plants uh, some seeds might not be like um, uh may not be like viable or able to uh, germinate so for that reason as well to stay at the safe site and seeds collective um, yeah so um, cause of all of these reasons acha phir next thing is that um uh, there is this diagram showing the events that occur to form a human fetus and it is a flow chart and then the question is complete table 6.1 by using the information in the flow diagram to identify the cell the organ and the process is shown so organ p we need to tell the name of the or cell organ or process now we need to tell what is like organ p so let's go back to the previous space where there is flow diagram okay so organ p now organ p is true what is being formed a diploid cell is being formed so diploid cells are formed through like ovaries or like 
testes ovary or testes so it is uh, ovary has been written right here so it is testes So it is testes. Okay, so it is testes. And then uh, uh, cell S. Uh, the cell S is. Uh, okay, where is it written? Okay, diploid cell S. So um, it is like haploid sperm pollen cell and haploid egg cell. They actually uh, uh, they actually are combining to give you diploid cell. And now this is, would be zygote because that's how a zygote is formed. So it's zygote. And then uh, process uh, Q produces sperm uh, and eggs. So okay let me see okay then process q process q produces sperm and so these are haploid sperm cell and haploid egg cell being produced in process q so it would be meiosis it cannot be mitosis because through mitosis diploid would be produced so it's meiosis and then diploid r produces diploid s so diploid r produces diploid one no, no, no. Process R produces diploid. Sorry for that. So process R can name him with Anna. So process R ke through we are getting diploid S. Now this is actually a uh, haploid sperm cell reacting with haploid X cell giving you zygote. That is what fertilization mainly is. So it is fertilization. Then process T occurs so that cell S can grow into an embryo. So process T would be, let me see. Process T, deployed cell into embryo. So that is going to be a mitosis now. So that it can like a uh, zygote is going to grow into deployed cell in order to differentiate into the uh, uh, features that an embryo requires, right? So process U occurs so that uh, the embryo can gain oxygen and nutrients from the mother's blood. So that is mainly implantation. Uh, the embryo gets implanted in order to get the nutrients and the oxygen from the mother's blood. State why it is important that sperm and egg are haploid and not diploid. Now that is for the maintenance of uh, like the chromosomes present so that uh, those are like they need to be haploid not diploid maintenance of the same number of chromosomes because of the, if, if they are deployed number of chromosomes they are not really going to double at or like fertilization so uh, in order to maintain same number of chromosomes And I have given you a whole lot of reasons. So you can choose, or you can make the answer by yourself and check out the mark scheme as well for this. So state the function of the jelly coat that's around the egg cells. Now consider this uh, the egg cell, just a minute. Okay, and uh, this is the jelly coat surrounding it. Now uh, this jelly coat around the egg cell actually prevents more than one sperm cell to actually fertilize one egg because it's going to the jelly coat as soon as one sperm cell actually fertilizes this egg the jelly coat is going to get hardened up so that uh, not any other sperm cell uh, enters this jelly coat and fertilizes the egg that has been fertilized by one sperm so 
to prevent more than one sperm to fertilize an egg. The placenta provides, um, we need to complete uh, the sentences with the appropriate words and uh, one mark for each. Placenta provides a large surface area for the dash of oxygen. So, uh, gaseous exchange hota hai, so it could be diffusion. Diffusion of oxygen carbon dioxide between maternal and fetal uh, fetal blood dissolved nutrients also pass across and placent uh, the placenta examples of dissolved nutrients are um dissolved nutrients could be which acids amino acids or fatty acids depending upon what you want okay and uh, with that uh, those could be like the vitamins and uh, glucose or uh, glycerol or minerals antibodies pass from the maternal blood giving natural natural dash immunity that is passive immunity to the baby for some infections that the mother has had or has been vaccinated against each different type of vaccine contains one or more now vaccines make out the vaccines with their antigens antigens for the activation of the anti bodies in your body and antibodies are kind of the warriors present in your body against which are prepared to like fight against a disease and in order to vaccine is actually vaccinated into a person in order to make those antigen antibodies inside your body to make them aware about the type of germ that is entering the body and then body is going to generate that's uh, uh, the antibodies which are like equipped to fight against that specific antigen or that spe specific uh, germ and uh, that way it's easier for body to recognize when the next time germ enters your body so that's how vaccine works because vaccine is mainly dead uh, microorganisms so that's uh, when, when vaccine is injected into the body the dead microorganism the dead germ is not really going to affect you in any way but it's actually going to activate the antibodies inside your body and they, it would make the antibodies recognize that this is this type of germ so you have to prepare this type of antibodies for uh, to fight against it and taken from the pathogen pathogen is the disease causing agent that causes the disease now so pathogen okay so that would be it and i hope you did understand and allah is